another edition of the Nightly News. I'm Chris Lee here with LPNN, bringing you all the news that is news and none of the news that isn't, most of the time. Tonight's episode is brought to you by... <laughs> Lois's Head. <laughs> <laughs> and H&R Block of Page, Arizona. <laughs> you made us a little big tonight. Uh, no, it's the same as normal. <clears throat> there we go. There we are. The Page Public Library... H&R Block of Page, Arizona, and Ted's Marine Supply. Give a shout out to them and thank them for supporting us because it helps us get you the news in real time. And as you can see, we do have Lois with us tonight. She has uh, some things she's going to be talking about. Yes, I will roll in so people can continue to see oh, yes. our, our sponsors. <laughs> I will roll in when you need me. Well, I, I know what we can do here. We'll, we'll, we'll just fix it. <laughs> so, uh, Ted's Marine Supply is having a 4th of July blowout sale. 20% off of wakeboards and more. Head on down there and check them out. All right. <clears throat> Let me see if I can adjust uh, Lois's uh, head over here. <laughs> oh, this is so much fun. This is what happens in uh, live TV. you got to love it, right? Doo -doo. Oh. <laughs> nope, that, that wasn't it. The screen. We'll put that there. Oh, 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 there we go. Oh, there, there we go. And then we'll put that. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Thank goodness. All right. Yay. Now you can this, see Lois again. This is what happens when you do a last minute plan. Eh, well, things happen. What do you do? Thank you guys so much for liking, commenting, and sharing on all these videos. It helps Facebook spread the word to everybody that wants to know what is going on in and around the area. So we got a few things for you today. Actually, a lot of things for you today. As you can see uh, from the title there, there's fires going on, there's restrictions, there's fire danger, there's red alerts. Everything is red, and it's hot. That constitutes as red. Yeah, it's hot. So uh, we'll go ahead and jump into some of our local stories really quick, and then uh, we'll move on to some of those. So, uh, from the Glen Canyon National Recreation Area, they would like to put out the reminder to everyone that if you are visiting Horseshoe Bend, to use caution. Temperatures are predicted to be over 100 degrees this week, and it has been so far every day. And it is being advised that for individual safety, you do not visit Horseshoe Bend during the hottest parts of the day. It is also being advised that no matter what time of day you visit, bring plenty of water, wear a hat, and use sunscreen. To gauge how much water you need, how to recognize the signs of heat illness, and other safety tips for visiting Page, watch our interview with Brian Keller and Jason Larson from Page Banner Hospital. Also, if you are bringing your pets with you, watch our interview with Dr. Roundtree from Page Animal Hospital on how to keep your pet safe in the Page heat. And we'll add something on top of that over at uh, Ted's Marine Supply. They've got the little dog shoes. Yeah, the little uh, heat protector booty things. Yeah, you put, you put the little shoes on the dog and it keeps them from burning their, their, their little their pads. pads. Yeah, definitely good. Uh, let's see. Why, <laughs> Harlan says, why don't we get a city of Page background? We'll put that in there later. But right now, we have uh, the Page Public Library. Let's see, where is it? This way. This is the Page Public Library, because adult Nerf Wars are tomorrow night. Yes. And if you caught the morning show, we're, call it, we're uh, dubbing it Space Marine Training Camp. He is dubbing it Space Marine oh, it's Training official. Camp. <laughs> it's official. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, make sure you uh, check that out tomorrow night. You just have to sign a waiver and show up with a Nerf gun, and you can run around in the library and shoot people with foam darts. Sounds like a good time. Yes, it does. All right, uh, so Arizona has a red flag warning. I believe they actually extended this. It's uh, from Thursday from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. That would be today. And that would be today, but I think they increased it, actually. We'll have to check on that later. I forgot. Uh, <clears throat> most of northern Arizona, it is just a mess. So be careful out there. It's hot. It's windy. It's extremely dry. All right, let's see here. As a reminder, the Flagstaff area is still under Stage 3 fire restrictions, meaning consumer-grade fireworks are also banned. Instead of fireworks, the city of Flagstaff has joined with the Oakmont to host the 4th Annual Lights on the Lawn 4th of July celebration from 3 to 9 p.m. Activities will include water slides, obstacle courses, a mechanical bull, food vendors, a beer garden, and musical performances. Parking will be located at the Continental Divide Buh, Driving Range. 
Other area events include the parade, which starts at 9 a.m., and a free outdoor concert presented by the Flagstaff Symphony Orchestra at the Pepsi Amphitheater. If you are still wanting fireworks, head on over to Page. The City of Page is still hosting their fireworks display on the Lake Powell Golf Course, and we'll be interviewing the guy setting off those fireworks on the 4th of July. As he's setting them off. Yeah, well, uh, theoretically. I'm not really sure how that's going to work. It's going to be interesting. It could be very interesting. Or unless it's right before. Uh, Yeah, I was going to go, it's probably right before. It could be interesting. Either way, it's going to be interesting. Yes, definitely. (laughs) So stay tuned for that one. Uh, Let's see. If you're in the Tuba City area, Tuba City events are being held on July 3rd at the Tuba City High School football field. There will be Jumpy Castle, a kid's zone, hot dog eating contest, music, games, water balloon fights, and more. The events are scheduled from 5 p.m. to 12 a.m. The 4th of July here in Page. We're going to have a parade that starts at 10 a.m. and we will be broadcasting the parade live and are currently looking for one sponsor for that broadcast. Uh, Contact us if you want to be that sponsor. (coughs) Excuse me. All right, let's see. Park activities will start at the flagpole at approximately 11 a.m. There will be an opening ceremony at that time. There will also be various games for the kids throughout the day. They're going to have musical chairs, sack races, the fire department's going to be shooting off the water cannon, a watermelon eating contest, and piñatas. For younger kids, they have a fish pond for them to enjoy. Not really sure how that's going to work. Is it an actual fish pond? I, I think it's it's one of those um, plastic pools. Ah, okay. Well, that makes a little more sense. That's awesome. Because if they've got the fish already on it, it looks like a fish pond. Okay, well, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, and out in Big Water, we just did a recent interview with the Americans Motorcycle Club who are selling fireworks out there in Big Water. They're at the first uh, right turn just as you enter Big Water, and those fireworks that they're selling are going to a charitable cause. Yes, it is Strike Out Cancer. Strike Out Cancer. And they also use the funds that they raise for all kinds of other things, like the local food bank and stuff. Yes. So go out there, empty them of all their fireworks so they can donate all that money to their charities. Um, We do have some information from the city of Big Water themselves. They are going to be having, uh, they're going to be letting people uh, launch fireworks from their baseball field out there. They're also going to have quite a large display, but we have some information from the city of uh, Big Water and from Big Water's fire chief. So they're going to be allowing fireworks from 8.30 to 10.30 Arizona time. Private citizens are only allowed to have Utah-approved fireworks. That are the only kind of fireworks that they'll be allowing out there. You can only light fireworks off in designated areas. No fireworks within city limits uh, of within the city limits of Big Water, except within the designated ball field during the designated time. The city of Big Water and Big Water Fire Department invites everyone to go out there, have fun, and be safe. The Americans Motorcycle Club will be assisting with safety, traffic control, and crowd control. So make sure you give them a shout out and buy all their fireworks and pay attention to what they have to say because, you know, it could get crowded out there. It could. It (laughs) sounds like it may. Yeah, it definitely might. All right. Also, from, let's see, the the City of Commerce, the City of Commerce. The That's Chamber, California. yes, the Chamber of Commerce here in Page uh, is going to be having oh, a nice. vendor fair, and you can still register for that. You need to call the uh, the Chamber of Commerce at nine two eight six four five two seven four one, or you can stop over there for forms for that. Yeah, and sorry, that was the City of Industry. I was. <laughs> oh, City of Industry. I see. I see. Very well. <clears throat> All right, let's see what else we have here. we got all kinds of things. There are a lot of events going on this month. I know. Holy crow. I know. Well, not even, I mean, it's it's, (laughs) it's this month bleeding into next month. It is. There's a a lot lot of stuff going going on. on. A lot of fun stuff. So we did put out earlier on the Facebook feed uh, something about the White Fire. We do have an update on that. The forward progress of the White Fire has been stopped at 13 acres, approximately three and a half miles northeast of Clint's Wells. They have four engines, they got a hotshot crew, a bulldozer, one air attack helicopter, aircraft, 
one type one helicopter, one type two helicopter. They're saying to be careful in the area. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Let's see. Uh, I'm not sure what. Uh, oh, I think uh, Harlan's talking about the fireworks. Yes. <laughs> All right, uh, we have uh, we have some things for you as well. Uh, Utah has a message that they tweeted out to everyone, and uh, we wanted to share that with you guys because, uh, well, it's uh, kind of interesting, possibly. Oh, yeah, live on the fly. Got to live it. <laughs> All right, almost, almost. And this is there Utah Fire Info. Yeah, this is Utah this. Fire Info that tweeted this, and it is actually really important, but it's also kind of fun. And I've got to put that over that because somebody had some fun with one of the comments. But anyway, <laughs> all right, there we go. So this is the state of Utah right here. And uh, on the text here, it says, for reference, the areas not in red are the areas where it is lawful. Oh, you didn't cover it. Oh, oh well. <laughs> we tried. <laughs> for reference, the areas not in red are the areas where it is lawful to, uh, <laughs> to light fireworks prior to July 2nd. Hint. It's illegal everywhere until then. Yes. So that was uh, from the Utah Fire Info uh, tweet page. We thought you guys might get a kick out of that. A little fun there. <clears throat> All right, let's see what else we have. We actually have some news here today. This is from the AP. Arizona is renewing a focus on a drought contingency plan for shrinking supply of Colorado River water. And other western states are paying close attention. An Arizona utility was accused earlier this year of manipulating the system that governs water allocations. The Central Arizona project has since pledged to be more cooperative with other river users, more respectful and more transparent. On Thursday, it is joining the Arizona Department of Water Resources to restart discussions in Arizona on how to create more predictability in the river supply amid drought and climate change. U.S. Bureau of Reclamation Commissioner Brenda Berman is the keynote speaker. So that is going on. That uh, is going to be interesting. Ah, let's see. Harlan says, uh, oh, I'm sorry. We've got all kinds of stuff going on here. <clears throat> okay, let's see. Uh, Kelly's asking, are they lighting off the big fireworks in Big Water? They I... did say that they were going to be having a pretty epic display when I talked to them on the phone before they're going to be letting people set off their own fireworks. So I don't know if those are the big ones that you're talking about, but they did say it was going to be pretty epic. So hope that answers your question. Um, let's see. Replay last night's city council meeting with the volume and no interface problems. Yes, well, Harland, we will get there. We actually uh -oh. found some other information on the interface. Apparently there's some that's been hiding. So hopefully that'll fix it for the next council meeting. We do apologize for that, but we are going to be discussing some of the stuff that did happen at the council meeting last night here in just a few minutes. All right, uh, let's see. This is from KTAR. Arizona could possibly be in a mega drought, experts say. It says, even if Arizona sees an exceptionally heavy monsoon season this summer, that will not end the long-term drought in the state, one expert said. Randy Cervini, a climatologist with Arizona State University, said the state is coming off one of its driest winters in years and that it would take several big winters in a row, along with strong monsoon seasons, to end the drought. We've been in a drought really since the start of this century, <clears throat> he is quoted as saying, it's been a really dry period, particularly in terms of the winters. Cervani said that the Southwest has seen several mega droughts in the past that lasted more than a century, and there is no guarantee that the state is not in another one right now. Most scientists are agreeing that the drought started right around the turn of the century, maybe a couple of years earlier, he added. But the, that does not mean that there's not good news for residents. Satellite images have shown that storms forming in Mexico are slowly inching their way north. The thing to be watching for in regard to monsoon is what's going down in Mexico, Cervani said. If you notice from the satellite photos, you'll start to see that there are more big thunderstorms that are starting to build up down in Mexico, and every day they are starting to inch up a little bit closer, he added. That's a sign that the monsoonal moisture is getting a little bit closer, and eventually it will get up here. 
And for those who are anxiously awaiting the first big monsoon storm of the season, no worries. Cervani says the state will start to see more monsoons over the next couple of weeks. That's a good thing. <clears throat> yes, definitely. We definitely need some of that moisture up here. Yes. All right, we're going to go ahead and jump into the city council meeting from last night. That's why we have Lois here. <clears throat> she was out there live reporting, and we had some serious audio problems with uh, the interface, which was obviously very frustrating for everyone involved, yes, and was. I'm sure it was for you as it well. Was. So we're going to go over what happened at the city council meeting, and you're going to fill us in with the stuff that's not here, you know, the stuff that's in between the lines, because you're guess. actually there. Yes. All right, so we're going to go ahead here and uh, go over the summary real quick. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so for unfinished business, we have discussion and possible action by the city council pertaining to a zoning code update. Apparently, there was discussion only on that, and I believe there's some extra information here. Does any of this help for you? Um, no, that, that, that's okay. fine. Uh, yes, it was discussion only at this point. The update is... Um, Kim Johnson is waiting for the final public draft of the zoning code update. Now, remember, this is a complete zoning code rewrite. It, it's the not, new draft that they've been yes, working on? Okay. Yes. Um, it's been about two years now okay. that they have been working on it. And uh, let's see, what else? Kim Johnson also mentioned to the council that um, per state statute they are required to have a community meeting uh, about this update because it is so large it is a like I said complete it is a rewrite, complete yes. rewrite <clears throat> and they are also to hold a public hearing with the uh, planning and zoning commission between between planning and zoning commission and the public um, but Planning and Zoning Commission is also requesting and recommending that there also be a public hearing scheduled with the City Council and that because it is such a large change, um, Ms. Johnson was saying that it just makes sense to plan two hearings okay. because with the change there is more than likely a possibility that somebody will be request within the community will be requesting the second hearing anyway. Okay. And just to put that right out on the table. All right. Um, and, and that's just to help sp speed things along and make everything run work smoother in, in this transition. Um, she also did... Do, 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 sorry. Uh, well, is this, for, is this oh. still on this one here, the zoning code update? It, yes, this is still oh, okay. the zoning... All right. it, it, it was... Yes, it was rather in-depth. Um, and then after the hearings, there will be two readings from the council okay. uh, on, on the um, draft code. And then the council will vote on it. Okay. Um, once, it once it is approved, if the council does approve it, there will be a 30-day waiting period before okay. it is effective. Okay. And then once it's effective, it then becomes codified. I see. Um, okay. What... Her time frame, um, Ms. Johnson was asked by the council what the anticipated time frame is to get all of this done. Uh, the first, um, the community meeting, what they're planning, what she's hoping to have happen is the community meeting happen in July. Okay. Um, sometime <clears throat> next month. And she's also wanting to work with some of the organizations here in town and sort of do a a traveling informational with with the community to try about, and help spread out the yes. word about what's going on okay. yes um, <clears throat> and let's see the first and second readings and the hearings she is anticipating to occur sometime in August and September um, and Did she have she like a final end date for when everything's supposed to be wrapped up anticipated end is Hope, um, hopefully at, by the end of September. Is what they're shooting for? Yes, September? That, that, okay. is, that is the gold <clears throat> date. Well, not really date, but time frame. Is, oh, I see. is by I see. the end of September to have everything in, have, it, um, have the council already voted on it by the end of September. And then if it is voted and approved on, then it would go into effect at the beginning of November. Okay. 
right. Um, <coughs> and that that was all for the uh, for zoning the zoning code, code update. Yes. Okay, and this is from unfinished business. In other unfinished business, we have discussion and possible action by the city council pertaining to the sale of real estate located at 27 Poplar Street. And this was the second reading. And I do have some additional information uh, here. 27 Poplar was advertised for sale. The city received an offer for appraised value in April and proceeded to publish a notice of intent to sell real property. During the notice period, a second offer was received, which abated the first offer until further negotiations could be completed. Bids were solicited from the two offerers, and the highest bid was from Caroline, Caroline Eckes for $172,000.50. Staff recommends that council approve the sale to Miss Eckes. Do you have anything to add to that one? Negative. It was approved. Okay. <clears throat> All right. For new business, we had discussion and possible action by the city council pertaining to the Northern Arizona Council of Governments partnership to fund Meals on Wheels and Congregate Meals, and that was approved. Yes. All right. Discussion and possible action by the city council pertaining to page utility enterprises rates, fees, and charges. They have a resolution number of 1201-18. And uh, I, I did read this earlier. There was a PUE special board meeting. There were no members of the public present, but they decided to keep everything the same yes. according to their meetings. Correct. So there won't Correct. be any hikes. There right are no, 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 no rate changes. increases, yes. no changes. No changes at all. So, They're keeping everything yes. the same as it is. And that was also approved. Yes. Uh, discussion and possible action by the city council pertaining to a contract between the city of Page, DBA, Page Utility Enterprises, and the United States Department of Energy, Western Area Power Administration, or WAPA, Salt Lake City Integrated Projects for Firm Electric Service. That was also approved. Do you have anything to add for that one? Negative. Okay. Discussion and possible action by the city council pertaining to adopting the fiscal year 2018-19 preliminary budget and setting the public hearing date. Um, let's see, that was also approved mm -hmm. and... No, it was not approved. Oh, wait, no, it's not. The it preliminary was ah, yes. budget was approved and a public hearing Has is scheduled set. for July 25th at 6 p.m. Okay, so we'll put that in the calendar then? Yes. All right, so July 25th, 6 p.m. is when the public hearing on the budget is going to yes. be. Uh, put that in your calendars. All right, then we have an executive session, potential RV park on city property. And uh, as usual, staff has been directed to proceed as discussed in executive session. The rest of it is confidential as it was in executive session. Uh, let's see, business from the mayor. There was a presentation of master municipal clerk plaque to city clerk Kim Larson. Congratulations. Yes, congratulations, Kim. <clears throat> That, Apparently that it takes amazing, a lot of work it to does, get that. It does. Um, it, it definitely does. <laughs> <laughs> and from what I understand, she actually did that in a rather impressive time frame. <laughs> really? Oh. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. After that, we had another executive session for Horseshoe Bend. And what we have here, it says, direct staff to begin working on a fee structure by the July 11th, 2018 City Council meeting and set a July 11th work session for a presentation of the improvements and management objectives for the operations of Horseshoe Bend. And that's all the information we yes. have available on that. And then there was all kinds of board meeting Things. stuff. <laughs> yes. Would you care to um, explain that to the, our viewers the, out there? Um, <clears throat> the boards and committees. Uh, in, in Page, it's been difficult apparently to fill um, necessary seats and positions within the local boards and committees and so Kim Johnson had presented to the City Council a proposal to limit and limit the amount of seats required. So for moving them right now currently most of them are at seven, seven. and she wanted to reduce them yes. down to five yes. to be able to function. Yes okay. and <clears throat> evidently the only way to do that because that limit is written in city code it the city code has to be amended and so there is a rather lengthy process that goes through um, that it takes to have that done. Okay. So it wouldn't be for another two months before that change could be taken into effect. But they are looking at things that they can do. 
Um, they it was suggested maybe combining some of the boards and committees. So because, making less of them, just like yes, conglomerate them together yes. so they have um, multitasking. There, okay. there was a comment that there are a lot of boards and committees, and so it may help in, in combining them. So that they can them. actually staff them yes. properly? Okay. Yes, All right. So that is one of the suggestions on the, bo- on, on the board there, um, is to combine them. Um, now, there was some uh, kind of thing going on uh, there were, are, are they shrinking one of the boards, or are they waiting to appoint people to the board? They are actually, from what I understand, it, it was rather confusing. Um, from what I understand, one of the boards is being put on hold until the, I, I think, I think until the next council meeting. On the 11th, see, I believe. Yes, to see exactly what direction they're going to be whether taking. Whether they're shrinking or whether they're, they're seven. Sh- whether they're shrinking or they're combining Okay. And um, so, yeah, we will we will have to see what happens with that. All right. Um, there was only one. That was the only board that did not have um, enough people. No, it was that was the only board that did not have any appointments to it last night. Everybody, all the other boards that were on the list last night had their appointments added. Okay. All right. And I know you're going to be going through that. Yeah, we'll go through that here uh, for for now, I guess. Okay, so we had, uh, let's see. Okay, so they had, uh, um, here we go, discussion and possible action by the city council pertaining to the number of seats. We just talked about that. Discussion and possible action by the city council pertaining to appointment to the Page Airport Advisory Board. Uh, Brian Keller was appointed for a term ending June 30th of 2021. Uh, let's see, the Community Community Center Advisory Board. Judy Kitson was appointed for a term ending June 30th of 2021. And Naomi Short was appointed for a term ending June 30th of 2019. Uh, let's see, discussion and possible action by the City Council pertaining to appointments for to the Page Community Development Advisory Board, which is the one we were just talking yes. about. There are no appointments at this time. Because they'll be talking about it on the 11th, yes? I I believe. We believe. Okay, but it just says no appointments at this time. Discussion and possible action by the City Council pertaining to appointments to the Page Library Advisory Board. We have Regina Santelli, Sherry Brown, and Cindy Stafford have been reappointed for terms ending June 30th of 2021. Uh, Let's see, the Page Parks and Recreation Advisory Board, we have... Mandy Lotz, Susan Pilkington, and Shelley Johnstone have been reappointed for terms ending June 30th of 2021. And let's see what else we have here. The Planning and Zoning Commission, R.B. Ward was appointed for a term ending June 30th of 2021, and Shelley Johnstone was reappointed for a term ending June 30th of 2021. And then there was the Page Utility Enterprises Board, uh, Tony Ferrando was reappointed for a term ending June 30th of 2023. Now, one interesting <clears throat> thing that um, came to light last night during the conversation with all the uh, boards and commissions was if there is a board and no one is staffing it, if it is not, if, if the positions aren't, aren't, no, it's if the positions aren't filled, okay. the city council actually is able to step in and act as that board. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Yes, right. that one was an interesting okay. tidbit of information. That is definitely interesting. Yes. All right, let's see. Uh, well, that was it for the city council meeting. Are we ready to go ahead and move on to weather? No, because it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a bit warm out there, isn't it? Although it wasn't as bad today as it has been, I can and tell you that. And that's because of the wind, I think. Yeah, but it makes it feel like a convection oven when it gets too hot. That's so. true. All right, we'll put, go ahead and put that there. Oh, oh. <laughs> Live TV, gotta love her. All right, we'll go ahead and transition this over. All right, so here's the weather, and then we're going to go into some other stuff that's going on. Tonight, we got a low of 73 with the winds hovering just above 10 miles an hour. Tomorrow, high of 98. Once again, winds right around 10 miles an hour with a low of 71. Saturday, 97, still 10. And then the winds drop down below 10 on Sunday with a high of 98 and a low of 74, and then it starts creeping back up into the hundreds starting next week, with predicted for the fourth, a high of 98 and a low of 73, partly cloudy skies, 
and winds just under 10 miles an hour. We'll have to keep an eye on that yes. to see exactly what the wind conditions are going to be like in the future. So keep an eye out for that. Oh, and ha, I know, I know it's just a blip. It's just a glitch out there. But if you look really closely right here on Tuesday evening, there is a there it is three percent chance of rain at two a.m. in the morning. Which means we're gonna flood. <laughs> Probably we're all gonna float away. And then uh, you know, obviously, the farther out you get from uh, from today, the less the predictions are accurate. But it's looking for like Saturday the seventh. They actually have like a twenty two percent chance of rain, but I wouldn't count on it. <laughs> right. It That's may just dry, dry up. First. How those things work, yeah. So uh, we also have from the Page Public Library, we talked to Debbie today. Yes. Debbie Winlock. You did. The, uh, the, yes, we had an interview with her today. Check that interview out. and it was, uh, it was a lot of fun and very interesting. And we got to talk about all of the services that the library provides. And uh, just as a hint, it's not just books. I, I remember hearing that. Yes. I was listening. Not just books. They check of. out all kinds of stuff. They have, uh, they have Wi-Fi hotspots that you can get where anywhere you have cell signal... You can connect to uh, this device wirelessly, and then you have internet. So if you're doing any kind of college classes out in the middle of nowhere or whatever, as long as you've got cell signal, you have internet. And you can check them out just like a book, which is really cool. Yes. And the big thing that's going on tomorrow night, which I have been wrangled into attending, is the Adult Nerf Wars. And it's from 9.15 to 11.15, and it is Adult Nerf Wars. All you have to do is sign a waiver so that you can't get mad at the library if you trip and hurt yourself. Or uh, shoot somebody in the eyeball with a Nerf dart. That's never a fun thing. No. <clears throat> you just sign the waiver and uh, come on down. They ask that you uh, you definitely bring your own uh, Nerf weapon, unmodified. Uh, they do have some uh, for loaning out, but if they run out, you got to make sure you bring your own. So now, didn't she? Didn't Debbie mention something that they're getting ready to do? Uh, which one? There was so many things. It Are had you to deal about? with rentals. Rentals? You mean checking out? Oh, yes, the bicycles. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are bicycles. Apparently, they're getting some bicycles donated to the library, and you'll be able to check those out like a book, too. I mean, there yes. were... It, yes, it and was... they're doing a backpacking thing, so if you want to go out backpacking, yes. you've got a backpack, a water bottle, a first aid kit, the whole nine yards. It's, it's incredible. Oh, and they've got that Frisbee golf thing. I can't remember what it's called now. <laughs> I think it's on my paper. Let me look. What's it called? Is it, is, it, is it Frisbee golf? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. Um, let's see. No, let me say there. Adult Nerf Wars. Nope. Well, I'll have to cover that later. But e either way, they have, uh, they have the, the things there, and they have... Oh, disc golf. That's what it's called. Disc golf. They have disc golf. And I was kind of confused as to what that is, but then she explained it, and I was like, oh, that makes sense. So do you want to explain it? Uh, well, you get it's like a frisbee kind of thing, and you throw it at a. It looks like a trash can made out of chains, and you try and hit the frisbee inside of it. And, yeah. So you, cool. you can check out those, and they have a court over there that you can play on right next to the college. And uh, if you have no idea how to play it, they've got books on it, so you can figure it out. <laughs> oh my goodness! I mean, hey, you got all your bases. <laughs> it it there. sounds like I need to listen to that interview. Again. Yeah, there's all kinds of crazy stuff going right. on. Right, I, I remember our library when in the area I grew up in. It did not have that amount of stuff. They checked going out on. books. Yeah, they did. And this one checks that out books about it. and and internet and, then and it's got activities. They've got cooking classes. It's insane. It's awesome. Yes, it is. So uh, don't forget to go over there and check out all the stuff that they have. Uh, that's all we have for you guys uh, tonight. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and comment on all of these posts. And thank our sponsors. We've got the Page Public Library, H and R Block. And Ted's Marine Supply, yes. who, if you hadn't seen, is having a sale for the 4th of July. Yes. We told her that we'd make a, a, a banner thing for her so that uh, she could get some stuff, uh, some inventory cleared out. So head on down. I was going to say, out. empty her out. Yeah. <laughs> well, and also the fireworks guys out in Big Water, the Americans yes. Motorcycle Club. Go clear that out. It's for charity. And, you know, you get to have some fun with fireworks. Darn skippy. So... All right, well, we will see you guys tomorrow morning on the morning show. Thank you for joining us. Have a great night.